afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to session four of the ESG Demystified Training Series. Um, today, we're going to be covering uh, the sustainability reporting standards um, for social housing, which have uh, recently been uh, announced and launched. Um, uh, to take us through that, it's going to be myself, uh, Dominic Brindley, head of the public sector team. Uh, we've also got Dr. Arthur Crevers, head of our sustainable finance for corporates. Uh, and George Flynn uh, from the Corporate Financing Risk Solutions team. Um, so if I can just run through on the next slide um, what we're going to, to, to be talking to. We're going to talk about overview of, of the, the reporting standards themselves, the key benefits and the drivers as to why they've come about. Uh, walk through some analysis of the key themes um, within the, the, the body of um, the standards, how they can be aligned, the metrics uh, and the impact on sustainable debt instruments, uh, a little bit of talk about how NatWest can help support um, clients through this uh, and then also look ahead uh, around reporting uh, and governance. Um, so just to, to, to tick it off, moving forward, uh, I'm going to give an overview of the key benefits uh, and drivers. So if you can move forward um, two slides, that'd be great, please. So uh, what are the standards and, and um, what is it? Well, it's a voluntary ESG reporting framework for social housing providers uh, and has really um, been developed in a very unique way through uh, collaboration between um, investors, housing associations, service providers, as well as the impact investing organisations and ourselves as, a, uh, as NatWest as the only bank on the, on the uh, working party. Um, and, and really, it consists of 48 criteria covering topics such as affordability, um, safety standards, uh, as well as zero carbon targets. And has been born out of um, the thought process that clearly this is an important topic uh, for both investors, but also uh, issuers. Uh, and rather than have a whole series of different um, requests coming from um, uh, from the investor community in terms of different questionnaires was basically to try and develop and on the benefit side of thing is a consistent uh, reporting standards across all of the housing associations uh, um, that, that are going to be adopters to create a common language uh, on ESG between the buy side uh, um, on the investor side and the sell side um, from, from issuers. Um, the, the initiative really is developed and driven by um, uh, a need to support the growth in ESG aligned investment in social housing uh, and has a wide level of uh, industry support, which I'll, I'll come on to in a second. The key purpose here is uh, to try and drive the, le the level of capital that's available to be able to deliver uh, more social housing. So if I can just move to the next slide, uh, just going to talk to, um, I suppose, the, the evolution, the key dates and the standards development. So over on the left hand side in, back in May, uh, of this year, the white paper, the first version of the reporting approach uh, was launched in May 2020 uh, based on a review of existing ESG investor questionnaires, uh, workshops with subject matter experts from the working group. Then moving forward to uh, May to July, there was a public consultation and feedback process. And that feedback process actually took um, a series of engagements, webinars, um, uh, and those engagements were with over 400 organisations and individuals through written feedback, oral feedback and group consultation events. All of that feedback is available for people to, to see in terms of how, how the criteria and um, the final consultation has been, been arrived at. And, and based on that feedback, um, so here um, in November 2020, um, the criteria was revised and the final report uh, was launched in November uh, 2020. And I suppose the next steps and what, what lays ahead for, for next year is that actually uh, the social and affordable housing um, sustainability reporting standards will have a board uh, that, that's created to, uh, to help drive and continue to make sure that the, um, the standards are relevant uh, both now but also in the future. So moving forward in terms of where are we right now, if we can move to the next slide, please. Um, we were, were uh, as part of the working group. We were ha were helped with large parts of uh, trying to trying to engage uh, with as many as many organisations as possible to become early adopters of the standard. And on the left hand side here, you, you can see that um, there is quite a substantial amount of housing providers that are that are already uh, listed as being early adopters of these standards. And I think that's quite critical in the sense of um, trying to make the standard something that. 
are meaningful, useful, and actually um, uh, ha have a take up from uh, from the sector itself. And over on the right hand side, uh, and sorry, in one comment, I would say on on the the, the organisations that have um, uh, and notified themselves as uh, as early adopters. That goes from the, some of the largest housing associations, if not the largest housing association uh, uh, in the country. Um, to housing, uh, sorry, in the UK, to, to smaller housing associations, and it's great to see that uh, housing associations from um, f from from Wales and further afar uh, are actually uh, taking taking on and being early adopters. Um, on the lending and investor side, uh, um, clearly you've got some of the largest um, sterling um, UK investors, the likes of Legal and General, M and G, uh, and Insight, were all party to to the working group. Uh, and obviously, it had a significant um, uh, uptake in terms of um, names that have been added to that, both from the banking side uh, uh, and also from the investor side. So um, it's a great um, it's a great uh, platform to start from, and I'm sure as we move forward, uh, there'll be more people to come. And with that, uh, I'm just going to hand over to George to take us through the next section. Uh, thank, thanks very much, Dom. And, and just in terms of uh, moving to the uh, to the next slide, um, I'm going to briefly focus on the the key criteria uh, underpinning the the, the report. Um, one kind of really key point is this is the kind of first sector to develop a sector standard approach to reporting, which which is a clearly a very uh, important dynamic and, and and a really kind of landmark event uh, in terms of what that looks like. Um, to add to Dom's point, the genesis around the development was was around the the quote we've got on the slide there, uh, in terms of the um, uh, the Impact Investing Institute um, um, around developing common approaches, uh, themes, system wide tools, uh, and theme specific metrics and KPIs, which, which is a really kind of clear and tangible um, uh, point that that they that, that they've kind of been very clear at um, stressing. Um, the process, as Dom's outlined, was was a clear and structured approach, which included um, taking the kind of ESG questionnaires that investors had been sending through to clients and and looking at them from from different investors and, and lenders, uh, looking at the alignment with um, global ESG uh, impact reporting standards and frameworks, and a really kind of positive and engaging sector wide collaboration. Uh, with players right across uh, right across the, the the piece from 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 banks, investors, consultants, and, and housing associations. Um, so, just briefly touching on two points, I, I suppose, kind of you know, I'll walk through how the criteria are structured. Firstly, and then the principles underlying the criteria and the type of criteria that are underlying the, the report. So, just in terms of the structure of the criteria, um, uh, they're looked at within three high level areas, as you'd, you'd expect. Um, environment, social and governance. Um, the, these themes are clearly aligned with uh, the UN Sustainable Development Goals and, and some relevant examples include uh, environmental themes relating to management of uh, existing housing stock, uh, as well as social criteria relating to the local community, uh, as well as residents uh, and engagement there. Um, I think just on, on this slide, we've outlined three key um, underlying principles uh, in terms of the construct of the criteria, which I think are really important to, to stress briefly. Um, I suppose the first point is around um, measurement and recording, and ideally uh, criteria that can be published uh, in annual reports. And I think this is reflective of the social housing sector's um, significant uh, data uh, production already, uh, and ensuring metrics um, are publicly reported and disclosed and aligned with uh, internationally recognised accounting standards. So. What that does is provide practicality for associations, but also confidence to uh, investors as part of that process in terms of uh, monitoring the metrics. I think the second key principle there is around, um, you know, as Dom's outlined in terms of the early adopters, um, the criteria should really work for small and large associations and, and really reflect the diversity of providers uh, in the UK. Um, you know, by creating this report, it allows a more streamlined approach to reporting uh, ESG performance in, in, in a pretty standardised way, which, which we think is a really important uh, point there. Uh, and I think finally, um, I think it's focusing on the key points, you know, having been involved in, in a large number of transactions in both public and private placement markets, um, there is a constant tension between the level of engagement in questions um, from investors and, and some quite detailed questions on ESG um versus you know what is 
what are the key fundamental areas that are of most critical importance. So it's balancing those two points together um, to, to make sure that we're particularly focused on areas um, that, that are most important to investors and also reflecting on um, uh, other metrics that could be developed in the future uh, to future proof this, um, this important criteria there. Uh, so if we can move to the, um, to the next slide, um, this just that briefly outlines the type of criteria um, within the report. Um, as Dom's outlined, there are 48 criteria which are detailed in the annex um, to the report. Um, thankfully, I'm not going to walk through every single one uh, on this call, um, but you know they are divided into both core and enhanced metrics. And I think that the key stage of this report um, uh, that was announced is to focus on, on the core criteria. Uh, which are required to be reported against um, for those wishing to be early adopters of this standard. Um, I think the enhanced criteria are reflective of the wider engagement uh, around, uh, around other factors on the E, the S and the G side. And that's not to say they're not as important, um, but some of them may be too challenging or time consuming for uh, housing providers to complete. Um, and they can also act as kind of an aspirational journey for um, organizations to, to get to in, in, in the future uh, on their ESG journey. Um, we've outlined in the appendix of, of this presentation um, the core criteria in just a little bit more detail around what, what they look like and uh, feel free to take a look at that after the presentation um, and when you've got the slides um, available to you. I suppose one key area which we, we've been working with clients recently on is, is reporting against the criteria. Um, the expectation um, of the report is that housing uh, providers will uh, report on an annual basis um, using the, the SRS. And I think that the key point there is this should be a, a bespoke um, uh, report um, and a standalone document that's you know, actively uh, available on your website uh, and publicly um, disclosed um, to, to, to maximise that, that kind of um, disclosure piece that we were speaking about earlier. Um, it's also expected of investors that you know they will start to adopt these criteria. Um, as Dom's alluded to, a large portion of the of the key sterling accounts have signed up as early adopters, um, and I think that's a really important point to to enable um, you know a, a bit more streamlined questioning from an ESG perspective, whilst not taking away from investors' credit work um, and enabling them to have their own independent credit processes, which 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 is clearly very important from a um, investment criteria and investment assessment perspective. Um, so that summarises kind of a brief overview of the criteria. Um, I'll now pass over to, to Arthur to just to walk through the alignment of the metrics uh, and the impact on sustainable debt instruments. Great. Uh, th thank you, George. And, and indeed, this is an important uh, element uh, to, to these uh, standards. I think um, we in the working group were very conscious that we don't want to create a fragmented universe uh, of ESG reporting standards. This is about uh, ensuring that the standards are aligned with other sustainability targets and frameworks that, that, that are relevant and material uh, to social housing providers, uh, be that sustainable development goals, uh, be that some of the ICMA principles for sustainability debt, and uh, be that certain other sustainability accounting uh, standards. Um, if we go to the next slide, in terms of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, um, what, what we've developed uh, here uh, are, is an uh, overview of the key SDGs uh, that, that are related uh, to social housing. Clearly, the absolutely fundamental one is SDG 11, um, Sustainable Cities and Communities, uh, but, but second order ones uh, are, are, are diverse and we, we've, we've, we've laid out here the, the eight main ones uh, which you'll see contain a combination of both environmental SDGs such as number 13 on climate action or number seven on affordable and clean energy uh, as well as a number of uh, social SDGs be that number four on quality education uh, or number one on, on no, no poverty. And importantly, each of the um, the themes within the SRS, which uh, George has outlined, uh, can, can be linked back to at least one uh, of, of these SDGs, um, i.e. I, I reporting uh, alongside the, the SRS means that, that you can show alignment with uh, up to nine 
uh, of the 17 uh, SDGs. So, so, so clearly, uh, I, think, I think very uh, beneficial given the societal role of, of social housing uh, providers. And turning to ICMA, if we go to the next slide, um, what, what is also laid out in the, I guess, the technical uh, annex or spreadsheet for the SRS um, it is alignment with the ICMA uh, green and social debt criteria, as well as indeed the, the ones from, from the LMA, the Low Markets Association. Uh, and and the, the important point to note here is both those standards uh, are, are, are largely focused on use of proceeds. So, so raising financing to support specific projects, specific assets, um, and, and what the criteria uh, has, uh, what well, we've done in mapping the criteria is consider um, if you were to invest money in, in enhancing specific criteria, what, what, kind, what kind of ICMA and LMA uh, label instrument could, could, could support that. And what you'll see there, and, and perhaps that, 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 that's an obvious one, but, but the green buildings category uh, is particularly uh, is particularly material to, to many, I mean, means seven of the, of the criteria. Uh, and then, then the, the second most, most frequently um, linked uh, criteria are, are to affordable housing uh, and to socioeconomic advancement and, and empowerment. And for, for the latter, I mean, that, that, that could be financing uh, that then supports you know, resident, support, uh, resident support initiatives or placemaking initiatives. If we go to the next uh, slide, um, we, we, we've also, within the working group, considered um, some of the other prominent um, sustainable accounting uh, standards, um, such as the um, sustainability criteria that have come out of a World Economic Forum uh, auditor-led uh, initiative, um, the Task Force for um, Climate-Related Disclosures, so the TCFD, um, but, but also some of the, the slightly longer-standing sustainability standards, such as SASB. Uh, and, and and GRI. Um, so again, uh, consult the technical annex to, to, to see uh, how those align. And you may find that, that you're already reporting on several of the SRS standards through, through these respective um, reporting frameworks. To go to the next um, slide. So, 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 so thinking about um, the SRS standards uh, and, and perhaps then using them uh, to tie into a sustainable debt instrument um, th th there's some, some clear guidance in the final um, report, um, which, which ends between you know, the use of proceeds instrument, uh, which I've talked to you already, where using sustainability reporting standards can allow you to identify specific parts of your organization that are already meeting high environmental and social standards, and link those to a sustainability bond or loan, or indeed or parts of your organization that, that are underperforming uh, and, and, and lead. Uh, improvement projects, be that uh, building refurbishments, or other projects, li link those to a to use of proceeds sustainability debt instrument. Uh, in terms of KPI linked instruments, uh, the, the, these are instruments where the the coupon or the margin of the debt instrument is linked to sustainability target. Uh, it's often very important for that sustainability target to be relevant uh, to the sector within which you um, operate and also be comparable uh, to your peers. Uh, so from our perspective, um, for such a KPI-linked instrument, uh, choosing one of the 48 indicators in, in the SRS is a, a very uh, useful uh, starting point. Um, th that now concludes the section on, on, on standard alignment. Let me hand back to Dominic. Thanks very much, uh, Arthur. Can we move through to um, the next slide, please? And again, if that's okay. Thanks very much. So I think in terms of uh, what Arthur has alluded to, I think a lot of the work that we undertook um, within the working group um, to, to try and align um, what investors are looking for uh, uh, per se with what, what issuers are saying uh, was there, were, were there, were there um, uh, points that they wanted to be able to report on or indeed where the limitations are. I think in terms of just talking more holistically about the value add that we can bring, uh, not only in terms of um, this specific sector, but more broadly is distilling best practice um, from other sectors. We 
noted that um, we've been looking across a number of other uh, accounting standards as well as as well as what other sectors are doing. So I think in terms of so sort of taking some of those points and distilling best practice from from other sectors, but also other relevant uh, uh, um, um, standards is important, and leading that into developing uh, a reporting framework, uh, taking that framework and then embedding that uh, reporting into your corporate strategy. Uh, and then moving on to structuring a best-in-class uh, financing framework. Uh, uh, and the evolution doesn't uh, um, um, stop there. Uh, supporting ongoing reporting requirements um, is absolutely critical and something that we, we do for a number of, a number of clients across a multiple, mul multitude of sectors. And, and again, we'd say that that was something that uh, is something that we'd be very happy to, to do. In terms of key areas of support, um, um, so I think in terms of from from the um, uh, SRS themselves, HA level reporting advice around how to align uh, uh, to the SRS is specific guidance on which SRS metrics uh, investors do deem as being important and therefore are absolutely critical to have in your financing framework. Um, embedding the SRS metrics uh, in a sustainable debt product, Arthur obviously touched on. Um, the routes that are being uh, that are being explored, uh, on, primarily on the use of proceeds, but but, but increasingly on uh, the use of KPI um, type uh, financing solutions, and then also ensuring that um, the communication channel around what you've created, how you want to um, get that message to investors, communicate communicating your SRS aligned strategy to investors and stakeholders. Uh, would all be areas or key areas of support that we can provide within that envelope of um, uh, of support. Um, so I think uh, moving forward, if I can, to, to the next slide, that takes us to um, looking ahead and what we can expect from reporting uh, and governance, if, you can, if we can move to the next slide. Um, I suppose key developments to monitor are um, how you get the sustainable uh, reporting uh, into and incorporating it into mainstream reporting and uh, the overall investment process that's going to be absolutely critical. Um, future iterations of, uh, of the standards, uh, as I said at the outset, um, we know where we are on that journey in terms of the time map, but um, going forward there is going to be a sustainability reporting standards board that board is going to oversee uh, whether or not those standards are still fit for purpose uh, and as, they, as we move towards um, uh, uh, 2050, particularly whether or not there needs to be a change or changes towards um, to, towards it, what's in the standards. Um, uh, absolutely critical, and I think uh, per what I was saying about looking across uh, at what others are doing uh, is, is having one eye on uh, other industries, whether that be uh, in the real estate finance sector or indeed in utilities or more broadly on the corporate uh, issuance side. Um, you know what what innovative um, um, initiatives are coming out of other industries that might well be relevant uh, for your particular sector uh, and with that uh, I'm going to conclude uh, the presentation and we can hand back for uh, questions and answers uh, I think in terms of uh, the first question that um, has come in is probably a question for you Arthur uh, is what differentiates the support that uh, NatWest can offer from uh, other banks or advisors? Uh, absolutely, Dom. Happy, happy to take that. And I, I think, I think a, a very important uh, uh, element um, to to our support is that we can give you the perspective um, of all of your critical stakeholders as a as a treasury team right where we're in daily contact with, with the key investors in social housing uh with with bank lenders uh, and indeed uh, regulators and other stakeholders so 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 we, we bring that perspective and it can help you focus on the metrics and the approach that's the most material and the most effective for those stakeholders Thanks very much. Um, uh, I suppose uh, perhaps a question for you, George, and um, one more that's come in saying, I don't have uh, the capacity to track 48 metrics. Is it still worth signing up? A fair question. Yeah, no, very fair question. And uh, and look, the, the 48 metrics um, includes kind of the enhanced um, metrics as well as the, the core metrics there. 
Um, so I think it's worth um, flagging that, that it's the core metrics um, that need to be reported against to, to comply with the standard, um, um, you know, for, for the time being. Um, I think clearly, you know, the enhanced metrics are there, as, as I mentioned, around um, uh, aspirations and and, uh, and have been flagged, I think, clearly as uh, probably a bit too time consuming in the initial phase for, for housing associations to um, to, to, to comply with um, fully. Um, I think what, what I'd encourage you to do is just have a look at the um, core criteria which are in the annex um, of, the, of, of the wider report and, and clearly from you know, an AtWest perspective, just to add to Arthur's point, we've got a, um, a dedicated um, ESG advisory team here um, that can help support um, you on that journey around reporting. Um, so, you know, of course, feel, feel free to reach out to any of you in AtWest contacts to discuss that in, uh, in more depth. Uh, thanks very much, George. Um, uh, I suppose the next question that I have here is, uh, who in my organisation should be responsible for implementing the standards and monitoring the metrics? Uh, Arthur, perhaps you can uh, have a stab at that first. Uh, absolutely, uh, Dom. And what, what, what we tend to find uh, for, the, for this type of approach to be successful is that it really does need to be cross-functional, cross-disciplinary. Um, so so, so we, we tend to find organisations setting up a, a working group um, with representatives from, from Treasury, uh, in investor relations, uh, external relations, sustainability, uh, and sometimes some, some of the actual uh, managers of, of, of the housing assets who can give more, more from the ground, I guess, uh, detail uh, and, and, and information. Um, so that, that tends to be the best. And often we hear that that's also a very positive feature in engaging in this type of reporting exercise, that it brings together stakeholders from across the housing association who, who may not be in as close a contact uh, otherwise. That's great. Thanks very much. Um, the question here, uh, I'm not a regular issue in the capital markets and predominantly have banking debt. Uh, therefore, uh, is it worth the additional cost and resources to implement the standards? Um, I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind having a, a stab at that first. And then uh, then if Arthur or George want to want to comment. But um, uh, it's a good question. And I, and I think um, sort of access to capital going forward is increasingly important for banks. Uh, uh, and pressure from, from from regulators, but also uh, in terms of um, um, shareholders, in, in terms of how our uh, how our uh, bank is, is performing relative to uh, uh, ESG, uh, uh, and to, to that extent, I think certainly from a banking perspective, um, uh, we've highlighted uh, um, uh, to the market our intentions around social housing and um, and what we want to be doing in terms of supporting the sector, uh, and how important that is for us. Uh, in terms of the societal benefits uh, that, that that actually brings, uh, those you know, in the banking market, it's it's equally uh, as available to to raise finance uh, uh, on sustainable loans, and increasingly, certainly more banks are offering that um, that type of solution. Um, I suppose from a from, from accessing capital markets perspective, uh, from a reporting perspective, I think it's uh, it'd be important for, for people to to be able to profess this uh, ESG story and narrative in a, in a way that um, uh, increasingly is going to be important uh, for, for both bank and capital markets access. Uh, and therefore, I think what, what we'll find is actually it'll become a, a necessity as opposed to a nice to have. Um, so uh, I appreciate there is uh, you know, a reasonable amount in some of those stretch targets uh, on the reporting standards. Um, it, it, and, and I don't expect people to be there uh, f from from the sort of off, but but, but certainly the core standards uh, of reporting are probably worth um, understanding and seeing whether you can report against them. And if not, what the journey to get there is. Uh, Arthur or George, I don't know if you uh, you wanted to add any comments to that. I, I, I would fully echo that, Dom. I, I think that the direction of travel within within the sector is, is that that ESG reporting is becoming almost as as essential uh, to stakeholders, both 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 financial, but indeed also non financial stakeholders, uh, as, as a lot of the traditional accounting and financial bottom line uh, reporting. 
Um, so so uh, my, my expectation is that within the next few years, uh, it, it will be uh, maybe not comply or explain, but but it will be 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 quite quite near 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 universally adopted. Great, thanks, Arthur. Uh, I think um, I've had a question come in from from uh, Martin Watts. Uh, um, does the panel have a view? If the reporting framework will aid disclosures on ESG from rating agencies, uh, and secondly, improve credit spreads in the secondary market, uh, Arthur, I don't know if you want to start with that, and happy to uh, happy to sort of uh, add something uh, following on from that. Uh, absolutely. Um, well, when it comes to the credit rating agencies, as we know, they're still um, at a relatively early stage. Uh, in, in embedding ESG drivers into their credit rating um, products. I mean, it, it's a little bit more descriptive. It, it's sort of pointing to ESG factors when there are upgrades or, or downgrades, but, but, but it's not necessarily a, a, a fully blown methodology as they have for your traditional um, credit metrics. Um, so I think they'll be, they'll be taking a close look at this, but, but, but I, don't, I don't think it'll, um, it'll sort of feature di directly uh, yet in, 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 in their sort of line by line met metric assessment. Um, I, I think for ESG rating agencies that that's different. I, I, I think I think for them it, it, it is obvious to, to start to incorporate the, these features in, into their ESG ratings uh, of social housing providers, but, but that will probably take also another year or two to, um, to feed in. Uh, in terms of credit spreads, I, I think the, the risk is more around potential credit spread widening uh, if, if you're not adopting uh, the standards and that's leading then to major UK institutional investors to have to go underweight or potentially sell off their exposure uh, in, in your name. I, I think it's, it's, it's more that sort of negative risk rather than that there being major sort of spread tightening upside for, from, from, uh, from, from following the reporting standards. Um, thanks, Arthur, and I, and I think Martin just probably as a follow-on to that. I think the um, clearly there there hasn't been um, a, a multitude of issuance in the sustainability, uh, specifically sustainably linked term um, debt yet. Uh, uh, but obviously there are a number of bonds out there, uh, uh, and uh, we have found that um, uh, sort of size of order books and um, uh, interest in, in from an orders perspective has been something that. Um, uh, we've seen a slightly diverse group of investors looking uh, uh, as a result of the uh, explicit sustainability uh, uh, wrapped bonds uh, uh, and, and we'll increasingly see issuance uh, from the sector in, in that uh, in that regard. So once we have a, a bigger data set, but I think certainly some of the information around um, the greenium uh, 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 side of things around new issue premiums from purely green bonds in Europe, uh, is a good leading indicator as to to what we can expect um, in terms of uh, in terms of funding. Um, had one final uh, question through uh, as we stand at the minute, and uh, and there's a question as, um, around: uh, Are there any alternatives to the good economy standards, uh, and if so, how do these compare? Um, Arthur, I don't know if you want to uh, have a have a crack at answering that first, and I'll go to George. I'm happy to, and, and I, I fully sympathise with with, with a, a lot of um, treasury teams who who can find this uh, uh, cacophony of, um, of of standards quite 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 confusing. Um, when, it, when it comes to the 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 good economy uh, label for certified sustainable housing uh, label, um, th that was um, that. The technology and the disclosure behind that ha ha has been utilized and has been distilled in, into many of the 48 metrics um, that, 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 that you find um, within the SRS. Um, so, 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 there's, so there's a, a good amount of alignment. Now, now of course, if, if as a, as a um, housing provider, you, you find it very, very valuable to have uh, some additional external certification and, and validation behind that, then I think the good, um, the um, certified sustainable housing label is 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 a, is, is a useful additional uh, process to to go down. Great, uh, thanks very much for that, Arthur. I'm just uh, 
uh, acutely conscious of uh, of time, and uh, we don't appear to have uh, had any more questions uh, come in, uh, 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 unless you say so. Otherwise, uh, on the operator side, but failing that, uh, only goes to say uh, thanks very much for um, uh, for attending today.